to our uh, little demo here. Um, like Gina said, my name is Andrew Orloff. I'm the visual effects supervisor for Falling Skies and also the creative director. I oversee all the television work here at Zoic. Zoic's a visual effects company that does a lot of television work. We started uh, almost exactly 10 years ago working on Firefly, Angel, and Buffy. We went on to do Battlestar Galactica, uh, CSI, True Blood, Sarah Connor Chronicles. So we have a lot of history in the television area working with these franchise you know, shows, and, and, and Falling Skies has been a really great uh, creative opportunity for us to work with Steven Spielberg with DreamWorks Television, Greg Beeman and, and, and Remy to really bring these characters to life. And that's what I want to talk to you guys a lot about today. I know you've been talking to um, uh, some of the actors for the show, and I wanted to introduce you to some of our computer-generated actors. Uh, as you uh, as you know from 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 watching the, the show, we have three different alien races. We have the mech, which is our um, on the ground grunt uh, soldier, our skitter, which is our creepy lieutenant kind of spidery looking guy, and our uber alien or overlord, played by T.J. Storm here, um, who is our general. Um, and as we introduced the overlord at the be at the end of season one. Um, it became really apparent that we needed something that was a really strong performance from a CG character to stand with Noah and his performance in the show at, in, in, as, a, as an actor that had the same kind of dramatic presence that he did. Um, so it was decided early on that we were going to use performance capture. And performance capture is a technique that takes all these little tracking markers, I'm sure you guys have seen it before on, on TJ's suit here, these red cameras photograph it from all different directions, they re these guys over at uh, motion analysis combine all that data so that we can have a three-dimensional version of the actor's performance on our CG character. So if you guys could show them how we can move the camera around, the difference between the motion capture performance and a, and a regular performance that's filmed on camera is that we're not limited to two dimensions. We can move our camera wherever we want, we can photograph it from any angle, and then later as we go in to the, what we call the rendering process, where we add all our additional lights and everything. So what it allows us to do is it allows Noah to perform on location in the middle of the street, in the middle of the night in, in Vancouver. He performs against either a uh, stand-in actor that we just removed from the scene, or sometimes even just an eyeline match, which is something as simple as a tennis ball on the end of a C-stand. And so uh, Noah's there, he's in the environment with the director and the DP and all the lighting and all the set decoration and everything. We film him there. And then after we do a rough edit of the sequence, we come back to motion analysis and they have a large studio. This is just a small mock-up of where, where their studio is over at the, at, the, at the Henson stages. And we project onto the wall Noah's performance. The director, Greg Beeman, comes in directs TJ, and he's looking at Noah's performance and performing against the, 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 the film of Noah, um, and then doing his performance there. After we catch the motion capture, this is Jake Bergman, he's our lead animator. We come in, um, we'll polish up the motion capture a little bit, keeping 99% of what TJ does on stage, but Jake's able to come in and add the specific alien facial expressions that are needed to uh, to make this uh, this this uh, overlord really um, bring him to life. Um, so, this is one technique that we use to create the character, which is performance capture and, and 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 facial animation. Another character that we do for the show is the skitter. Um, really interesting methodology here, where. From here up, we actually have a suit and an animatronic head designed and created by Todd Masters of Masters Effects that's actually on the stage with the actors for the show for a lot of the shots. Now, the legs are so alien in anatomy, there's no real practical way to create these legs. Um, so what we do is we actually attach the computer-generated legs onto the actual performer. In addition to that, there's only one of these suits, so anytime you see two skitters, one of them is going to be computer generated and the other one's going to be the performer in the suit. Um, as we come back to wider shots where the skitter is doing something very acrobatic, these, these skitters have very athletic powers where they can climb up on walls and scramble up towards ceilings and hang upside down. All that stuff is handled by the CG skitter. It uh, started out with, this, is, this actually is a, um, 
this model started out as a, as a three-dimensional scan of the Todd Masters puppet that we were, took into the computer and made into a creature that Jake can use all of his, his controls to kind of um, move the pieces around, uh, all, all the different legs and arms. And um, we're looking very closely at the performance of the skitter actor on stage and recreating that inside the computer. It also has to be complete photoreal match to the practical skitter because sometimes they appear in the same shot simultaneously or there'll be a close-up of the skitter that's missing from the production that will have to recreate CG so we have to have a complete match with the with the realistic um, with a realistic uh, performer which is uh, can be challenging on a, on a television schedule um, the other character that we uh, do here is the mech the mech is a 10 foot tall metallic robot uh, with a gun for an arm, so there was no possibility of creating him as a practical piece or a motion capture performer. So this is all created by Jake and his team, all keyframe animated. So we've got the whole gamut of different methodologies of creating CG creatures from traditional keyframe, you know, um, puppet style animation all the way up to TJ and his uh, performance capture. The design of these uh, characters is a really uh, fun and integral part of the show. Um, Steven Spielberg is extremely involved in how these characters come to be and what they look like, what their anatomy is. We've worked with some of the, um, the, the biggest names in, in, in feature creature artists, these concept designers that design these creatures for all of Steven's movies, also work with us to create the creatures for this television show. We. Um, start out with a conversation with Steven and everybody over at DreamWorks, Greg and Remy, and talk about what are the story points of this creature? What does it do? Where does it come from? What are its motivations? And then we um, start out with a very uh, a rough, a, an array of rough sketches that explore different types of anatomy, different configurations, different silhouettes, and kind of narrow that down into a more refined drawing um, picking the ones we like and doing another set of drawings and then another set on top of that so we finally get a piece of key art that Steven approves which is uh, the inspiration for our final alien creature that we then go and create uh, as a, as a uh, computer generated asset that we can use in the show. Um, we also do a ton of um, environmental work for the show. There's alien structures and alien ships. There's also the whole apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic landscape of the show, which um, uh, we have to create burnt out buildings and, and wrecked freeways and, and all kinds of stuff like that. So there's a lot of, of different types of visual effects in the show and it's been just, it's, it's been great to, you know, uh, participate in creating this look with, with uh, Steven and DreamWorks and, and being a real creative partner on the show.